Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Lisa, also known as La Dolce Lisa. And this video is a long time coming because honestly, this is probably one of my favorite recipes. This is easily one of the first things I learned to bake as a kid. And I have been perfecting this recipe ever since. And I finally have the perfect, the best, most delicious, chunky, chocolate chip cookies. Now these are really chocolate chunk cookies and I spruce these up by using a browned butter. Oh my gosh, they are heavenly and it's so easy to do so don't be intimidated by that. They are as delicious as they truly are easy. There's just a few extra steps with the butter but I promise you it's worth it. It takes these cookies up a notch. They're so delicious. They're so gooey inside and like crisp on the outside and just heavenly so i'm finally happy to share this recipe with you guys so without further ado let's get started and let's bake these delicious chocolate chunk cookies The first thing that I always do when I make this recipe is I brown the butter. You can even brown this the night before and leave this out to get cool on room temperature. It will sort of thicken up a bit. Or if you're crunched for time, you can brown the butter, leave it out for about an hour or so, and then place it in the fridge for about an hour or so just to slightly thicken up. It should almost look like a sludgy butter. Now browning the butter makes it taste so delicious. It truly brings out the nuttiness of the butter. It just gives it this concentrated, almost sweet and nutty flavor and aroma. It really takes these cookies up a notch, but of course, if you guys are too lazy, I have instructions on how to use just regular butter on my blog post, ladolcelisa.com. So check out the link in the description box for this recipe as well for further tips and tricks. So I have here one cup or 225 grams of unsalted butter. This is cold butter, but it doesn't matter if you're using cold or room temperature butter because we are going to melt it anyway. So I weigh this in grams because it's a lot easier for me to measure all of this cute butter and now you can keep a whole chunk or you can cut it into cubes like I do because I find that it browns more evenly. So now that it's starting to melt we're going to just whisk this and continue to whisk. It's a little bit of time to melt but once it does it goes fairly quickly so a medium to even a medium to low heat once this melts. You'll see it's going to start turning bubbly in a little bit that's why I like to actually use a larger saucepan than what you think you'll need. As you can see, it's already starting to foam on the top. The milk fats from the butter are sort of separating. It's going to foam and then the foaming bits are going to be turning brown and sinking to the bottom. As soon as this changes color, you're close to being done. Later, I feel as though we are done. So remove from the heat and place into a bowl. So here is the butter when it's poured out. As you can see, there are some brown bits in there. None of them are black, they're brown, and the butter is this gorgeous amber color. It's almost like a thick amber liquid. It's beautiful. It smells very aromatic. You can let this cool at room temperature for a couple hours or overnight, or you can cool it quickly in the fridge for a couple of hours as well, or you can leave it at room temperature. We just want this to become a little bit more solid. It's a little bit too liquidy now for the cookie batter. So it's good to make this ahead of time but this is gorgeous beautiful liquidy brown butter so other than making the butter the next thing I do is I chunk up the chocolate because I like to use chocolate chunks when I can as opposed to chocolate chips I just feel like it elevates these cookies just that extra notch and I use a mix of milk chocolate and dark chocolate so we need 225 grams of chocolate for this recipe in the batter and then I even have a little bit of extra chocolate on top. I'll show you guys how I do that later. But for now, the 225 grams, I split it up by doing about 100 grams of milk and the rest, the 125 grams of dark chocolate. So slice the chocolate chunks, give it like a sort of rough chop really, if you will. You sort of want them to be bite-sized chunks, nothing too large but nothing too small either. And you'll of course have mix sizes. I mean, we're not perfect here. So again, smaller and larger chunks are actually quite lovely and fine. So I have those two types of chocolates set aside until I need them. Now let's get started and let's actually make these chocolate chip cookies. So now that we have the butter and the chocolate ready to go, we are going to actually make the dry mix for this ingredient. And that is of course the flour and the dry ingredients. So this is exactly what you'll need. So to a large separate bowl, you're going to be adding two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour or 325 grams. Next, you're going to be adding a quarter of a cup of cornstarch or 32 grams. 
The cornstarch actually makes these cookies nice and thick. It really keeps their thickness so they don't spread out and become flat. So I wouldn't recommend skipping on the cornstarch in this recipe. To that, we are going to be adding one teaspoon of baking soda or five grams. And finally, one teaspoon of salt or six grams. And then we are going to give this dry mix a whisk and set that aside until we need it. So now that we have the flour mixture ready to go when we need it, let's work on the main ingredients and let's get this party really started. So first things first, we are going to be creaming that delicious brown butter, which already looks pretty creamy to me. And we are going to be creaming that with some sugar. So to the bowl of our stand mixer or to a large bowl, if you're going to be using a handheld whisk, you'll be adding the one cup of browned butter or 225 grams. And this butter has been cooled and it's ready to go. Next, you'll be adding to that one cup of brown sugar or 221 grams packed brown sugar. And finally, half a cup of white sugar or 100 grams. So now that we have the ingredients in our bowl, we are going to mix this on about a medium to medium high speed just until the butters and the sugar get nice and creamy and pale in color. So let the butter and sugar go for about five minutes on a medium to high speed. It needs that long in order to become nice and light and pale in color. So just let that go and get your other ingredients ready. Can you see how much the color changed and how light and frothy this butter and sugar looks? It's going to be looking even better with the eggs and vanilla extract in this mix. So let's add those right now. To the butter and sugar mix, we are going to be adding two large eggs or 110 grams at room temperature and one tablespoon of vanilla extract or 12 grams. I always add the eggs and vanilla extract together and pour them in. And we are going to mix the eggs and vanilla extract for about a minute or two on a medium speed. During the mixing process, you will probably need to scrape down the size of your bowl at least two or three times. So do that in between. So that looks beautiful. And now at this stage, I'm going to be switching to a paddle attachment. If you are using a handheld whisk, you might wanna just switch over to a spatula to incorporate the flour mixture. We are going to be adding this dry flour mixture in about increments of two or three. So adding a third of this, mixing it, adding a third, mixing, adding a third, mixing, and then you should be done. Try not to overmix, but you definitely want to incorporate the flour. You'll probably be having to scrape down the sides of your bowl in between. This looks like quite the thick dough at this stage, so it's a good thing that we switched over or we could damage our whisk, which I've done actually in the past. <laughs> so now we have our cookie batter, but what is cookie batter without chocolate chips? and in this case, chocolate chunks. So I'm going to be adding the 225 grams to this mix and giving it a quick mix just to incorporate the chocolate and make sure that it is throughout. What I love about chopping my own chocolate is that there's little tiny granules of like flakes of chocolate that are left over and that studs the dough and makes it just look so beautiful. So let's add this in and we are almost done. Voila, the cookie batter is done. This is my favorite part because now I get to actually eat some raw. <laughs> I'm really not scared to eat raw eggs I don't know about you guys but this cookie batter looks delicious oh my gosh the chunks in these cookies I love the mixture of milk and dark or semi-sweet chocolate chunks it's so gorgeous unfortunately though we cannot bake yet I know a lot of you guys will probably hate this but we have to put this batter in the fridge for one hour if you're restless like me at about the 40 minute mark you can begin to preheat your oven that way by the time the hour is up your oven is ready to go and you can scoop these and bake them off right away but they honestly need to stay in the fridge for a good hour so I'm going to cover this with some plastic wrap or cloth and I'm going to place this in the fridge for an hour and then I will see you back here we are going to be baking them on large baking trays covered in parchment paper and we're going to be scooping these out with my favorite cookie scoop studding them with a little bit more chocolate chunks on top and they're gonna be delicious guys I can't wait to show you how they look and to taste them so I'll see you in an hour but through the magic of television I will see you right now So we're back one hour later and we're now ready to scoop out these cookies and bake them. They are going to be fantastic. I can't wait to eat these. But first, let's scoop the cookies. And I have my beautiful cookie scooper. This is really like an ice cream scooper. I will link it down below because it is honestly the best, the only cookie scooper that hasn't broken on me. So check out the link in my description box down below. But let me get the cookies out of the fridge and scoop them up right away and then bake them. So this batter is perfectly scoopable. I'm basically packing it onto this ice cream scoop and I'm simply placing it on my cookie tray. 
They are going to be perfectly chunky round mounds of cookie dough, so delicious. So let's continue to do that and keep them spaced apart. I would say at least a cookie width in spacing because they will spread a bit in the oven. So if you don't have this scooper, that makes your life so much easier, but it's okay because you can probably use about a quarter of a cup and then scoop out from there. You do want to have your cookies pretty even in size. These actually weigh about 80 grams, give or take. So that is a good indication for you guys. It's really important to have sort of the same size cookies when we're baking. Now is my favorite part, and this is placing the extra chocolate chips and chunks. So other than the 225 grams, I cut up an extra, I would say 100 grams or so. And we're going to place some chunks on the top because that is what's going to make these cookies look beautiful. There's a lot of chunks inside, but sometimes they don't always appear that way. So we're going to sort of troubleshoot and add some chunks onto these cookies. So when it comes to placing the chocolate chunks on top of your cookie, you can be modest and place about three extra chunks, three or four extra chunks or so, or you can be a little more extravagant and place like five or six chunks and a little bit of the dusting of the extra chocolate that you chopped. By all means, go crazy. I'm going to do both so you can see how it looks with both. And we do not need to flatten these at all because they're going to naturally flatten a little bit as we bake them. You could even sprinkle a little bit of salt on top before or after baking to give it that little salted chocolate taste. Since I'm going to be baking off the rest of the dough on the same tray, I like to reuse my parchment paper. I'm going to be placing this dough in the fridge until I need it. So now with my oven set to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm going to place these cookies in the oven and bake them for about 10 to 11 minutes, give or take. Usually 10 minutes is fine, but everyone's oven and pan is a little bit different. So again, troubleshoot by doing a smaller batch at first, just to make sure that the cooking time is even. So I'll see you back here to try these. Now that the first batch is out of the oven, the second one is in the oven doing its thing. I'm going to taste these cookies. I let them cool on the tray for about three to four minutes and then I place them on this wire rack to cool completely. And now I'm ready to get one. They're still warm, so I'm so excited. Let's take this little guy right here. Oh my gosh, it's still warm. Oh, the smell of chocolate chip cookies is like unlike anything else. So let's just give it a bite right away. Mm. Guys, these are the best cookies ever. Mm. Obviously, they are perfectly gooey on the inside and perfectly crisp on the outside. They're chewy, they're delicious. They're deliciously scented with that browned butter that gives an extra little je ne sais quoi, if you will. People won't really know what you did, but they are going to be the most perfect and delicious cookie. I love the combination of dark and milk chocolate, so I cannot resist these. Everyone loves these chocolate chunk cookies, so I'm so happy to finally share the recipe with you guys. If you do like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos to come. A classic chocolate chunk cookie with a twist with that brown butter would be the perfect addition to any cookie box for the holiday season or enjoyed all year round. So I really was happy to get this video out before the Christmas and holiday season. So guys, thank you so much for watching. If you want to make these delicious, gooey, chocolatey, cookies they have the perfect amount of chocolate chunks in them the greatest ratio of milk to dark chocolate and they're seriously divine if you want to keep it classic make these and you will not be sorry so again thank you guys so much for watching and please leave a comment down below if you do make this recipe i love to hear from you all but until then happy baking mm. <laughs> your dough is studded. Guys, these are the best cookies ever. Mm. <laughs> Let's make sure I don't chop it on my teeth. <laughs>